Support for this podcast comes from Zuri Food, all natural, all human grade dog food, offering four different diets to optimize nutrition for your pup. And now, two different kinds of dog treats as well. Visit www.zurifood.com today to order yours because pups are people too. Okay, welcome uh, back to the Guitar Cast, everybody. Our guest today is Mr. Davey Allen. How you doing, Davey? Quite well. Good to be here. Thanks for doing this, man. Um, Davey and I met playing through the Jack of Hearts band. Sure did. And um, Davey plays with that group with us uh, from time to time. Um, it also is uh, up to a lot, playing with a couple of different bands, and we're going to talk about that. Um, first of all, let's start with uh, Davey. Where are you from, and uh, how did you get into music? I'm from Monticello, Indiana. It's like right in between Chicago and Indianapolis, northwest Indiana. Okay. It's kind of like flat, cornfields, bean fields, rivers. Uh, that's about it. Music from an early age like my parents don't play music no one in my family really they're fans of music but they don't really? play an instrument and my grandpa famously always said he couldn't carry tune in a bucket <laughs> couldn't play the radio without getting static things like that you know they're <laughs> almost like humorous about the fact that they didn't play music really but uh I, I had some like early inspiration going and being in like a gospel church there's a lot of singing a lot of music playing so I, I wanted to be a part, and my parents encouraged that, and I went, I think drums was my first instrument. Drums, and then later in school, I started playing the trombone. Trombone, huh? Trombone, that was my, where I got any actual musical knowledge was from taking trombone lessons and learning That's about cool. time signatures, and uh, otherwise, I, you know, I'm just self-taught. Yeah. Yeah, I never, um, I never attempted to play any kind of horn or wind instrument yeah had the opportunity you know it's a different beast band and stuff like that but i've uh, always pretty much played string instruments you know and piano i guess I, right on. i learned piano at a pretty young age and uh at the time you know i did like didn't like to practice you know what i mean uh-huh. i thought it was like my punishment was practice for a half hour you know yeah but uh I feel like that completely uh, set me up to learn a lot more down the road. Yeah. To really dig into music and kind of yeah make sense of it. You know? I wonder how my musical experience would have been differently if I would have been forced to. I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't have been forced to at any point. But, but if I would have had a set designated time that I went and saw and my parents were adamant that I went and did that thing. If, I, if my reaction to music, would it still be a part of my life in the same way it is today? I don't know. Yeah. So did you have instruments growing up, like, or did you have to go out and find? Well, uh, the deal was is that my 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 father's second wife, Karina, Karina Burkett, Swice Allen, uh, she uh, had a piano, and it was just sitting around, and she would play it occasionally, and I know there was sheet music lying around, and so I I, I would pick it up, start plucking it away, and eventually I realized that, you know, these couple notes sound good together, and yeah. if I change it here, it does this thing, and it was more more of a feel. It wasn't like I was going for a minor key at any point, but it was, hey, this is a dark chord. To right. me, it was like shades. Right. Yeah, in the same way, I was, uh, I remember at pretty early on, like, when I was kind of learning guitar, and made those same connections, like, with a minor feel, and how, how that sounds emotionally and right. identifying it by that and then la- i learned later what to call that technically musically yeah. you know how long have you been in la i've been here for about five years over five years now okay yeah i think it was september of 2012 
yeah. when I moved here. Did you already have a gig lined up or anything? No, no. Uh, it was kind of on, not a whim, I guess, but it was, my girlfriend was moving to the California. We hadn't been dating for very long. And she uh, said, hey, you know, you're, you're welcome to join. Or maybe I suggested it. I can't remember. <laughs> but we, I found my way here, and I did medical supply delivery. I worked for Apria Healthcare wow. out of the El Segundo location and drove all over Los Angeles. Got to know the roads really well. Got to know yeah. the city. That way, I mean, like, that was a really cool job because I was going into um, different parts of the city I would have never have known about or thought to go. And then I got to be like, hey, Abby, come, my girlfriend, Abby, let's go check out this little square or this little yeah. nook that you didn't know was here and you have to be living in that neighborhood and yeah. it's, it's a pretty it was a pretty cool experience yeah i that reminds me of my first my first job at the recording studio and i was a runner uh-huh. and i had to learn the roads for for the job of course. so you have to learn pretty quick because you you make a mistake and you you know you, you always remember that road because that's where you turned left that one day and you were, you know, running late. And <laughs> right. And this is like, I know for me, it, it was, there, there were GPS, GPSs, but there, it wasn't like I would pull up my phone for directions now. And now everyone just pulls up it on their phone. And this Dude. is oh, just a few years ago, but yet it was, your phone was not an option. It was yeah. printing oh, off man. You something. had to print it out at home. Yeah. Or, I mean, I had an atlas, I had an atlas, a full, yeah. full road atlas out in, in my passenger seat. Just to, just to figure out. Like, <laughs> That's so funny. You know, that wasn't that long ago. That was yeah. That was not even that long ago. But uh, so so what? How did your uh, you know time in LA like get rolling? Well, I had been working in Apria, and a friend of mine who uh, helped put a show together in Indiana, my friend Johnzo, he um, we had been I had been going to his shows with this band Fortress Social Club. They ended up being like my favorite LA band at the time and still probably are even though they're not together and it was just like the soundtrack to my uh experience here in California and we had been conversing and a friend suggested that he maybe try me out on the keyboards and uh I had been just playing on my days off at jams and things and he said, would you like to try out? So I think the very next day I went into Apria Healthcare and I said I was quitting. I did, that's all I needed. You know, it wasn't yeah. like I thought I was going to all of a sudden make a living playing keyboards, but it was the um, the um, bridge that I needed, what I wanted to do, you know, what I really wanted to do in sure. California was not deliver Apria Healthcare, but it was necessary. But then when I saw an opportunity, I was like, okay, now I'm all in, basically. Yeah. yeah. I I love that uh, moment, you know, when when because I've had that moment, and I know a lot of my friends, mostly musicians, would describe that same kind of feeling of like, at some point you just go all in, and you're you're trying to find work, you know, doing what you do, and yeah, that's a pretty uh, it's a pretty scary thing. It can be, and it's kind of amazing to me how many people can can do it and can get to that point you know yeah i've done it for a long time a lot of the people i know and work with they make music their their entire life and it's uh very commendable yeah and i've had a lot of people supporting me you know like i i feel like i was privileged enough to have a supporting cast in my life that enabled me to be able to make that decision absolutely jesus christ some some artists make that decision and they have no safety net whatsoever and they're just out there and it's the street or it's success or whatever yeah so um, tell me about how you got started playing with Eric Burden and the Animals. Uh huh. Well, uh, my friend Justin Andres, he and I played in a few different bands together, and I think he got a call that perhaps Eric and his people were looking for some new members, and they saw me in a video. Um, and said, hey, um, what about this guy? Even though Justin had already been interested in asking me. And they said, hey, what about this guy? And and I got an email from Eric's wife that said, would I be interested in submitting some music? And I did. And then as a collective group, at first it wasn't going to be. Uh, I was in this band with Justin, with Johnzo and our friend Dustin. And uh, we didn't know if it was going to be all of us or just a few of us. Uh, we weren't sure what the burdens needed. And eventually it worked out to where all of us got to go as a collective group. 
and auditioned with Eric in Ojai, where he lives cool. at the Brethren Studios there. And he came in and he had his hat on, pulled way down low, and he had a toothpick out the side of his mouth and a, a coat with the collar all the way up, you know, looking real, uh, you know, gangster almost, yeah. like British gangster, you know, right, right. Geordie gangster or whatever. And he, uh, we played one song with him, and I think it was one or two songs that we recorded that day. And afterwards, he just said, you know, invited us to go on tour with him. That's it, awesome. It was pretty surreal. That's great, man. And how long ago was that? That was uh, two years ago. Okay. Cool. And uh, have you been pretty busy with those guys? Yeah, very busy. Um, 2016, we were extremely busy um, all over the world. And then this last year, we were still pretty busy comparatively to the rest of my touring career. Yeah. Uh, but a little bit more uh, relaxed, enabled me to do some of my own my own stuff as well in the in-between times. But we, we made it to, I think, three or four different countries this year. Wow. And I, more than that the year prior. So. Where'd you play? This last year, we were in Canada, the States. We went to Switzerland. Um, we did this really cool. We flew to Jamaica, and we, we got on a cruise ship there. And it was a... Um, I don't know, most of the cruises that I see that are advertising like certain bands, it, it leaves something to be desired most of the time. I think the lineups are just so-so. But this particular one, it was us, Eric Burden... And it was the, the zombies. We saw the zombies. They oh, were on yeah. the same. Like, they split the crews up to where there were so many acts in the first half. Everybody stays on the boat. And then they switch over the acts. And so the second half were different groups. But, it, oh, there was uh, Vanilla Fudge, huh. which I was aware of, but hadn't really dove into their music. And then I saw them there. And I was just like, oh, my God. Wow. Th- these guys are still rocking. Like, my, like, Eric is rocking, you know, in their yeah, 70s. Yeah. And they're still, they're still killing it. That's it so pretty, cool. Pretty fantastic. That's cool, man. And um, so when you're not uh, on the road with the animals, what are you, who are you playing with around town? Uh, well, I have my main original project that I do. Uh, it's Davy and the Midnights. Mm-hmm. Previously, I had just been releasing music under Davy Allen, which is my name. But yeah. this is a, a little bit different group. I think my musical life here uh, has been mainly blues influence, which is kind of what I was doing before I moved to California in a band in the Midwest doing, you know, I think I call it the I-65 corridor. I don't know if anybody else calls it that, but it's yeah. the, it's the, you know, Chicago to Mississippi type of deal where you're playing all these interstate towns in between. And so when I got here, I was doing that. And there t- came a time where I was writing, I wasn't writing that music anymore. I was writing more Americana mm-hmm. songwriter folk uh, country, I guess. And so I think I needed a change in the the band name. So Davy and the Midnights is kind of like the departure from what I was doing before. And we added yeah. Brandon Conway on the pedal steel, and you you know Greg Cahill, mm-hmm. who he's got he can get a twangy nature to him. Very much so. Yeah, <laughs> Greg is also going to be on the podcast. Oh, cool! Soon. Um, yeah, I've seen you guys play, and it's it's awesome. It's really good. It's a breath of fresh air for LA. I feel like because I don't I don't see a lot of bands that have that kind of you know that uh, like country soul kind of feel. Yeah, you know? I think the soul, really soul is the interesting element about yeah. it because the country thing. I think it just what that wasn't intentional so much as it was it just happened. And, and then, it's the instrumentation, you know. Yeah. But um, so where. Where uh, do you guys have music up online or a website or anything? Yeah, DavyandTheMidnights.com. We released uh, a few songs about a month ago or so, maybe a little bit more than that now. Uh, and we are, we've been recording, going to have a lot more. We're still in the infancy, I guess. We haven't yeah. been together quite a year. I think it was last March okay. yeah, that's... that we got together and started. Yeah, that's no time at all, really. Yeah, <laughs> just been in the woodshed. Do you want to play? Let's play something from Davy and the Midnights. Sure. You got something in mind? Yeah. And just this run, in, run me through G- the... Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. The, this is the, I'll just play through the progression. It's the same progression the whole time. I've 
got to go I've got to fly I've got to leave This old town behind I've got to say Won't you fail me well For my baby Wish me to hell And she gets Just what she needs For I've always Been there to please Yes even now I play the games As I walk Down into the flames I've got to go I've got to fly me to hell i love it cool man um so do you for that group are you doing most of the writing or is it a group effort in any way um i'd say for the most part i do most of the writing i'll, I'll bring at least um a somewhat structured song to the table and then we may we may change it up a bit uh, sometimes the song is written when it comes sometimes it's part way, partly written there has been a on a few occasions within this band my first experience having a 24 hour lockout space with a group of guys yeah. to where we can go and you know key. some things are already set up we can get going where we left off from before and the songs have really matured because of it and I you know I, I guess I could have said that I knew that would happen but I didn't really believe it until I actually did it and yeah. man have the songs matured there have been a few that Greg or somebody else will have like a lick or something and then we'll write a song and then I'll put lyrics to it for, but for the most part I'm uh a bowl and a coffee kind of songwriter in the morning, you know, yeah. and then I'll bring the piece. Yeah. Man, you know, I've tried to write music for a long time and I have written, you know, quite a, quite a bit of songs only because of how long I've been doing it. Certainly not, uh, any kind of real volume of songs, but it's tough, man. It's really difficult. I think songwriting is more difficult than people, people realize. Yeah. For some people. I mean, for some people, it might come really naturally. But uh, I have to, like, really work something over mm -hmm. and over and over again. It's very it's very rare that I just, like, have the words come to me. Yeah. And it comes down on paper and it's done. Pretty rare. You know? Yeah. As a rule of thumb, I try not to, like, think about it too. Like, I, I don't think about the process too much because I don't want to... It seems to be working okay. You know, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to like uh, overthink it, so I try not to think about it as a rule. But I know that over time, my songwriting, at least from a personal standpoint, has gotten worse, which I think that's a good sign. Really? Like, I think my, my songwriting has gotten worse. But that's just because I've become a harsher critic of myself. Yeah. And like I, before, I was like, oh, that sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I guess you know? that, that is a good thing, you know, <laughs> to be uh, constantly thinking that you can always make something better, you know. Yeah, not to say that I don't look back and think, oh, that was, actually, I look back and think that wasn't as good as I thought it was. But in the moment, yeah, exactly. you, know, you know. exactly. Uh, this one is just an oldie but a goodie. I keep doing it and I have yet to record it. It's just like a little blues number in C, uh, the C Sprite. Uh, if you've been to one of our shows or anybody who's listening, you've heard the story, but it's, 
It's about my experience in Hermosa Beach, California, shortly after I moved here, about this young woman who came up to me and was very, very nervous, very scared, and she said she was tripping on acid, and she needed my, I look like a friendly face, and asked if I could <laughs> sit there with me on the, by the pier. I can see that. So we talked, and she talked about the Illuminati, and about how wow. Justin Bieber had been talking to her, and um, intense. It was, she called her mother, and who... Oh, that's always a great idea. Huh? Oh, man, it was really fantastic. Anyways, so, this is the song. See, okay, cool, <laughs> that's great, that's a great set <laughs> for a <song>. yeah. <laughs> Down at the sea sprite, drinking in the daylight, thinking about what's to come. Till long hair Lucinda from out in Loma Linda started speaking about the words of the Lord. I said, Stop your preach, and I don't even want to know your name. She said, Now watch out the man from the Midwest land. Your mama told Cause there's people out in there They take, they don't care I'm trying to speak about the words of the Lord I said stop your preaching I don't even want to know your name Oh baby now, hey Stop your preaching It's in vain Stop your Davey, thanks so much for being here and being on the Guitar Cast. When, what's coming up for you like in the next couple of months? Uh, I don't know when the air date for this is, but we'll be at uh, Harvell's on Friday the 26th. Okay. Uh, and then after that, we'll be at the Escondite yeah. downtown on the 24th of February. It's my birthday. But awesome. I'm not doing any birthday celebrations. I don't celebrate my birthdays. So gotcha. It's just coincidence. Just a show. February 24th. 
Cool. I love the uh, Escondite. Great venue yeah. here in downtown Los Angeles. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And, Davey, thanks again. Hope you ha- to have you back sometime. Sounds great, Andy. I'd love to. All right. See you all.